The Solid and Shade mod for Mountain Blade transforms Karadia into a darker place, sort of fantasy apocalyptic. It allows you to become a necromancer and to build your own minions from corpses and other items, and it has really well done questlines that allow you to become a werewolf, a vampire, or a lich. The minions you can make are mostly zombies, shades, constructs, and demons. The first thing you're going to notice in firing up the mod and making a new character is that the mod adds new origins or backgrounds. Best of all, it adds origins beneficial for a necromancer. When asked about my father's profession, I chose mortician because it's good for necromancy. It starts you out with coffin nails, which are a decent throwing weapon, but more importantly it gives you the ability to reserve 10 undead at a time using formaldehyde, which comes in handy later when you're upgrading your undead minions. It also gives you a bonus to intelligence, which is helpful. Preserving undead with formaldehyde makes them tougher and more resilient to damage. Another good option though would be the Chandler. This gives you a similar bonus, but for oil instead. It lets you upgrade 10 undead at a time using oil, and it also puts a set of candles and a flask of oil into your inventory. Burning undead with oil makes them move faster. Next you can choose what you spend your early life as. I chose Gravedigger because it lets you rob graves 25% faster, and it also gives a strength bonus. Grave robbing is good for money, but also essential for getting the items needed to craft minions with. Another nice choice for a necromancer would be the investigator. It allows you to scavenge for patchwork 25% faster. Patchwork minions are the weakest undead, and the first undead you can create, and this would allow you to build them faster. It also gives a bonus to agility and charisma, and charisma is always nice for having a larger army. When you come to the You Became section, the nicest options for a necromancer are a neophyte necromancer or a university student. I chose neophyte necromancer because it lets you start the game with the Necronomicon book. It also gives you a bonus to agility and charisma. The Necronomicon contains all recipes for minions and necromancy artifacts, and is also required to craft minions with. The university student option gives you an intelligence bonus and two books or two necromancy related artifacts. It also lets you improve up to 10 undead with sulfuric acid, which is nice. Of the two options, I think the university student option is better because of the sulfuric acid bonus. The fact about the neophyte necromancer starting with a necronomicon isn't very helpful because you won't be able to read it without going to the blood fountain. But if you visit the blood fountain without a necronomicon, then it gives you one. So starting out with a necronomicon isn't really all that big of an advantage. When you come to the final question about what made you make this decision, it doesn't really matter what you pick. None of these offer bonuses specifically to necromancy players, so choose as you'd like. The mod also adds new and highly randomized options like madness, blindness, demonic possession, etc. So if you're willing to gamble on the stat bonus, or want to roleplay something cool, you can choose one of these. They also have storylines attached to them. The only one you shouldn't pick is Fanaticism, because it will align you against the Blood Fountain, but you need it for necromancy. Now that your character is made, you'll start out in the world of Karadia. You'll notice it's a bit worse for wear though. The terrain looks all blighted or corrupted, and people dress a bit differently too, and wear face paint. But for the most part, it's the same. The main difference is the rampaging vampires, werewolves, necromancers you'll hopefully not run into too often. Your next priority needs to be getting to the Blood Fountain, so you can start being a necromancer. To reach it, you have to find Old Zender. It's hidden on the map until you approach it, but it's in the north between the Nordic Kingdom and the Vegir one, near Tilbald Castle. After you've spoken to the fountain, you'll be able to open the Necronomicon from the camp menu and begin making undead. The first kind you can make is the Patchwork Zombie. During the day, your character can search for dead body parts and assemble these crude undead. They aren't very strong, but they're at least as good as human recruits, and they also have a ranged attack. They're also free, they only cost you time. In order to progress, though, to better minions, you'll have to complete all the recipes on the first page of the book, and then return to the fountain for a promotion. All the little items and artifacts you can make end up doing something useful for you. Either they're going to provide a passive bonus, or they're going to be an ingredient or piece of equipment for a future ritual. So in the meantime, you should probably go grave digging and make as many patchwork zombies as you can, and start working down the list. 
Once every recipe has been completed, you can return to the fountain and get a promotion. You'll also be able to turn to the next page in the Necronomicon. If it ever happens that you've completed all recipes on a page, but you can't get the promotion, it means you need to level up a bit before you return to the fountain. That little detail had me stumped for a while. After you've unlocked the second page, stuff starts getting a bit more interesting. You'll be able to make your main soldier, the zombie. Zombies require corpses to be made, and there's a few different ways to get corpses. The first way is to win battles against humans, and take the corpse items from the loot menu after the battle's done. The second way is to grave dig. Grave digging gives you not only corpses, but also loot, like this nice Guy Fawkes mask I dug up, and also stuff like gold, silver, wood, and pottery. The third way is to sacrifice prisoners. I'd recommend getting a very high prisoner management skill, and dragging a lot of prisoners around with you. This way, whenever you need more zombies, you can sacrifice the prisoners and get corpses. Then you can raise them into a bunch more zombies. You can also make zombie horses from horse corpses. The zombie horse is a pretty good and cheap mount. It can be upgraded later, and you can easily get all your companions and horses by making these. If you go raid a caravan, you'll have to fight the mounted caravan guards, and the resulting carnage will result in a lot of horse corpses for you after the battle. You can also turn corpses into armor and wear it. The armor is made by dismembering the corpses and choosing the death items, like death's head to get a helmet. The armor isn't that great, but it beats having to buy armor at low levels, and it's good to outfit your companions with. It's really ugly though. There's a bunch of little artifacts you have to craft in this page to unlock the next page and be promoted at the fountain. Just like normal troops, your zombie gains experience and levels up. The next form of zombie is the Revenant, which is just a stronger kind of zombie. After the Revenant, you get the Horror. The Horror rides an undead horse and has good weaponry. It's at this point that you start noticing that the zombie is now quite a bit stronger. After the Horror, the zombie can reach its final form, the Abomination. Abominations are really ugly, as you can see, and they dual wield meat cleavers. They don't ride a horse like a horror does, but to compensate for that they're very very strong. On the third page you'll get a whole load more recipes for artifacts and you're also going to be able to upgrade your zombies. You can upgrade a zombie for speed, for toughness, or for strength. Improvement can also be applied to zombie horses. To improve speed, all you need is some oil. If you chose the Chandler background, you'll be able to upgrade 10 zombies per oil flask instead of just 5. What happens is the minions get burns using the oil and have a blackened appearance. The speed upgrade is the cheapest of the upgrades and it will allow your minions to reach the enemy faster. But in my opinion, the zombie horse benefits most from this upgrade. It's always nice if the horse can move faster. If you want minions that are tougher and harder to kill, use formaldehyde. If you chose the mortician background, then you'll be able to upgrade 10 zombies per formaldehyde flask instead of just 5. They take on a blue appearance, and their faces are a bit more skeletal, although they're still very clearly zombies. Formaldehyde is less common than oil, and usually about 500 bucks to buy. The towns and villages sometimes sell it, sometimes you can get it from grave digging as well. If you want minions that deal more damage, use the sulfuric acid upgrade. If you chose a university student background, you'll be able to upgrade 10 zombies at a time, instead of just 5. This makes the zombies look green. Sulfuric acid is as rare as formaldehyde, and it can be found in the same places. Zombies you upgrade will keep their color when you promote them to a new form. Blue and green zombies are significantly better in combat than your standard zombies, and they also look cooler. You'll occasionally find disciples in taverns, and they're pretty crappy units, but when you recruit them, you're able to upgrade them into a necromancer using a human corpse. The necromancer can then be upgraded into a few wacky mounted units, using formaldehyde or sulfuric acid. These units look really cool, but they don't seem that great, so I haven't used them that much. On the fourth page, you'll be able to get new kinds of minions. The first of these is the familiar. It adds a random creature to your inventory that will buff a different stat. I got a toad, which buffs strength. They're annoying buggers though, because every day they'll whine for food, and if you don't feed them, they'll start dying. If the familiar is allowed to die, you get a permanent minus one debuff to the stat that they're boosting. The next minion you can summon is the demon. 
In their base form, they're pretty decent troops, but they're nothing spectacular. Once they're allowed to level up though, they can transform into powerful armoured guys with big red hammers, and they smash stuff up really nicely. They're also fairly cheap to summon for what they are, and you get three of them per summon. The most expensive ingredient needed for them is the Ouija board, but that only costs wood, corpse dust, and blood. All things that can be found easily with grave robbing. After that comes the homunculus. At first I thought it was going to be some kind of clay creature, but no, it's more like a shadow soldier. The shadow soldier is a decent warrior, but nothing special. The shadow knight that he can become though, is one of the toughest minions you can get. He's at least as tough or tougher than a Swadian knight, and seems to never die. He also rides around on a super fast mount, and the mount looks really funky because it's like a headless shadow horse. Next comes the clay golem. Golems are quite expensive because they consume a philosopher's stone when being made. The stone costs you diamonds and gold. The resulting golem is very strong though. If you upgrade him, he becomes a blood engine. The blood engine loses its melee combat capabilities, but it compensates for this with a cannon on its arm. The cannon is loud and seems to miss a lot, but when it hits it seems to obliterate the target. If you are able to get lots of these, so they could fire in a volley, then their chance to hit would increase and they'd do extremely well. Even with just one of these guys though, I saw multiple kills dealt by the blood engine during the course of battles, so he earns his keep. Now we come to the final page of the Necronomicon. It leads to more summoning spells. The first of these is the Keres, which appears to be some kind of female demon. I read up on it, and a Keres is actually from Greek mythology, if you're curious. They aren't bad troops, but they don't really shine either, which is probably why one ritual provides six of them. For what they are, they do alright, but they can't be upgraded because they're in their final form already. After the Keres, the next summon is the Hellworm. Hellworms are very good for what they are, they're cheap and numerous minions. For what you get, they're priced about right, and you get 13 of them from a ritual. Like the carriers, they're also already in their final form. Next come the Brolochan. These are demons from Scottish folklore apparently, but in the mod they look like some kind of black Pokemon. A Brolochan will level up into a homunculus, which can then become a Shadow Knight, which is pretty good, like I said before. After these comes the Iron Golem. They require a lot of iron to produce, about 10 pieces I think, and also a Philosopher's Stone. So it's a very expensive minion. It does well in melee though, and it's almost unstoppable. It can later be upgraded into a gold golem, which is just a better version of an iron golem. I gotta say, I really like this mod. It's a good mod, especially if you like zombies and you want a darker Coradio. It's got a real nasty, ugly kind of necromancy in it. All the minions are hideous, even for undead. It's gross and nasty to be wearing that brown dead skin armor, and the components and artifacts you get from corpses are also pretty gross looking. This is kind of contradicted though by the somewhat goofy looking and almost cute demon summons. It's not hard to get your minions, and you can get very large armies of zombies, with the support of shadows, golems, and demons. The minions are all very useful and flexible. You can have an army that consists completely of zombies, or you can have an army of zombies with living troops mixed in, and then of course you can also have all the constructs and demons. So you'll have a lot of troops that fulfill lots of different roles. The troops that are lost can be easily replaced by slaughtering prisoners and reviving them. This makes for very cheap armies. The mod also seems to remove the cost of upgrade soldiers, which is nice. I'm also very happy to say that all the minions are permanent. There's not a single timed minion in the mod. If you decide to go for Lich form, you'll end up as a very squishy caster, because you receive a minus 12 debuff to strength and agility. This means you won't be able to wear armor or use any weapons or bows really. But in exchange for this, you'll gain a plus 12 to intelligence and plus 12 to charisma. This means you'll be able to lead a much larger army, and also have much more skill points. Even though you'll probably end up with zero strength, you can still wear the necromancer gear, because the stuff you can craft does not require any strength to wear. The sad thing is that achieving lichdom does not seem to change the appearance of your character, only the stats. The crafting in this mod is really good. Both minions and special artifacts can be crafted. Some of these artifacts are required to craft minions with. Either they get used as an ingredient for the ritual, or they are used as equipment to make the ritual possible. Ingredients are consumed, but equipment is not. Oftentimes, artifacts are equipment for some rituals, 
then they become an ingredient for others. For example, Ouija boards are considered equipment for making zombies. You'll always need one with you to make zombies, and it won't be consumed in the process. But demon summoning will consume the Ouija board, and you'll have to replace it afterwards. Most of the artifacts though will sit in your inventory, providing some kind of helpful buff. The only artifact I don't like much is the familiar. I mean, he's pretty cute and all, but it's annoying having to feed it and look after it because it will want food every day. Sometimes it takes days to construct a siege tower, and the process can't be interrupted without starting from scratch again. So it's either you abandon the siege and feed the familiar, or you let it die and suffer the permanent debuff. Overall, I'd give this mod a 9 out of 10. It's a very satisfying mod, and you'll be commanding large armies of undead to conquer Karadia with. I don't have many criticisms. The main one would be the familiar, which I've already discussed. I found it annoying. I also found it annoying having to perform every single recipe on a page in order to progress to the next page. This is because it forces you to make stuff that you might not need. The other slight problem is you can't really have zombies that are dedicated to their task because all of your zombies are on a one-way street to becoming an abomination. The abomination is good if you want heavy infantry. The problem is if you want your zombies to remain as archers or remain as cavalry because to do this you have to leave them unupgraded. It'd be nice instead if I was able to upgrade them into a zombie knight or a zombie marksman instead of having to make them into a zombie abomination. It's also a shame the mod isn't available for Mountain Blade Warband, but you can't have everything. Another nice thing about the mod is it's extremely well documented. The README file contains everything you'd want to know or want to find out. Anyway, it's a really great mod. If you like Mountain Blade, I recommend you check this one out.